Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise his holy name. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad. And it is a day we've never seen before and a day we will never see again. As always, we believe it is a day to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. We praise you and we give you all the glory and we give you all of the honor. Lord, you're so worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name on this Pentecost, oh, Sunday. It is the day of Pentecost, oh, hallelujah. It is the day that, that your fire, your Holy Spirit came down, Lord. And we just want to give you glory, God, and praise your holy name. Oh, what a day of rejoicing uh, this will be. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh, God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you and we just give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. You're worthy, God. You're worthy because you're holy. You're worthy, God, because you're holy, 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 God. You're worthy because you're a loving God, merciful God. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you this day for you. Love, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your favor. Shower down on us, Lord. Shower down on us your blessings. We thank you, Lord. We pray over this technology of Facebook and blog talk radio. We, we pray over it right now, dear Heavenly Father, that, that, that no, no mishappens happens with all the computers and the technologies that we're using. We plead your blood, dear Lord, over this 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 live broadcast and we plead your blood dear lord over this recording the heavenly father that 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 those that are listening now might be encouraged dear lord and strengthened and even saved and those that might listen to this recording later might be the same so lord we just thank you now we plead the blood over everyone who's listening we plead the blood over their lives their families their homes, their jobs, their, their finances, their relationships, Lord, their health and their homes. We plead the blood, Lord, over their communities, over their towns, their cities, their states, their countries. We plead your blood, God, because we know there's power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. We thank you this day and give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen. Welcome, welcome again, everyone, to Get Em Radio, God in the Midst. This is our Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. And on this day, I'm just so excited. I'm so excited because this is the day of Pentecost. Pentecost is that day that it, that is 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 fifty days, including Easter, uh, after Easter, and 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 and, 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 and five and five. 50, I mean, Pentecost means fifty, and 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 fifty is the number of grace, but it's also the number of jubilee, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna talk about the year of jubilee. Oh, hallelujah. And so the tag that I want to place on this Sunday school lesson this morning is celebrating freedom, celebrating freedom. Our text for today comes from Leviticus chapter 25, verses 1 through 12. Leviticus chapter 25, verses 1 through 12. And let me see if I can get my Bible up like I want it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody, everybody trying to make money these days on, 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 they, on their software. So they got all these good di different ads that come up and make you just want to holler. But anyway, I'm going to Leviticus and I'm going to read Leviticus chapter 25. I'm going to read it out of the 
uh, New International Version of the Bible, and it reads as follows. The Lord said to Moses at Mount Sinai, speak to the Israelites and say unto them, when you enter the land, I'm going to give you. The land itself uh, must observe a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years, sow your field. For six years, prune your vineyard and gather their crops. But in the seventh year, the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields or prune your vineyards. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the grapes of your unattended vines. The land is to have a year of rest. Whenever, whatever the land yields during the Sabbath year will be food for you, for yourself, your male and your female servants, the hard workers and the temporary residents who live with you. Now that 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 I I, I the NIV NIV talking about temporary the slaves that live with you. Come on now, I'm just saying what I'm saying. As well as for your livestock, the wild animals in your land, what whatever the land produces may be eaten. Let's go on now to verse eight. Count off seven Sabbath years seven times seven years so that the the, the 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 seventh Sabbath year amounts to a period of 49 years. Then have the trumpet sound everywhere on the 10th day of the seventh month on the day of atonement, sound the trumpet throughout your land. Consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty. Proclaim freedom throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each of you is to return to your family property and to your own clan. The 50th year shall be a year of jubilee for you. Do not sow and do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the unattended vines, for it is a jubilee. It is to be holy, consecrated for you. Eat only what is taken directly from the field. Oh, hallelujah. I've read for you uh, 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 Leviticus chapter 25, verses 1 through 12. Now, 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 to understand this lesson properly, to, to, to really grab a hold of this lesson, you have to understand a couple of things going on here. We're going to talk more about the Jubilee and the Sabbath rest, but then there's a day mentioned a day that is mentioned called the Day of Atonement. And that Day of Atonement is considered the most important holiday in the Jewish uh, uh, calendar, usually celebrated in mid-September or mid-October. This holiday was the day that the high priest uh, went beyond uh, the veil in the temple to atone for the sins of the Israelites. The, uh, the high priest would take the blood of a young bull and sprinkle it over the mercy seat, which was on top of the Ark of the Covenant. There he would confess the sins of the nation. On this day, the children of Israel were required to, to, to afflict their souls, which means they were required to fast and they were required to play, pray. That's the day of atonement. In addition, on the day of atonement, they are to, to blow the trumpet, not, not an instrument, but a horn that they have carved out. And this instrument was created by a ram's horn. Moses commissioned uh, uh, straight metal trumpets as well when we look over new, uh, Numbers chapter 10, verse 10. But these trumpets were not just musical instruments, but they were used to signal a proclamation or a warning to the people. 
they were used mostly for announcing public events such as war, a call to worship, or even a claim of kingdomship. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, I, I don't know if you watched the wedding of, 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 of Prince Harry and Princess Meghan on yesterday. If, 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 if you watch that, they had the trumpets blowing. If you watch that ceremony, they, they had the singers singing. Now, if you watch that ceremony, you saw a celebration going on. And boy, Bishop, oh man, Bishop, Bishop Michael Carey, he preached the power of love. Oh man, that was off the chain yesterday. I tell you, God's word came true. It, 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 his word says, your gift, he will make room for you. And you'll be able to speak in front of kings and queens. And look at that old boy, uh, uh, Bishop Curry from, from Carolina, speaking at the palace in England. I said, go ahead on up in the cathedral. I said, go ahead on, Lord. You do that. And I, I just want to say to you, won't he do it? Yes, he will. Why don't he do it? He did it for others. He'll do it for you. Hallelujah. So this lesson, this lesson, this lesson, the key verse to this lesson is verse 10 of Leviticus chapter 25. Listen to it again. Consecrate the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Each of you is to return to your family property and to your own claim. And so what this passage of scripture is saying is, 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 that, is that there is a time of jubilee. And when we look at jubilee from a Christian standpoint, we have no choice but to look at Jesus. Jesus is the one who made it possible for human beings separated from God because of sin to come home, to return to where we belong with the Lord. The, the liberty of this jubilee is the freedom from sin that Jesus brought about by defeating the grave, by defeating death itself, by defeating the devil and, and, and releasing us from the bondage of sin. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a jubilee to me. I don't know about you, but that makes me want to celebrate because Jesus paid it all and all to him he owed. I know I'm supposed to be teaching this morning, but y'all got to understand this is Pentecost Sunday. Oh, yes. And Pentecost Sunday, we ought to be at a celebration mode. We ought to be just excited about what God did on the day of Pentecost. Because on the day of Pentecost, so he, he took that, 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 that salvation that those 120 already had. They already knew who the Lord Jesus was. They had already been baptized of the Spirit. But on the day of Pentecost, uh, they got baptized with uh, the Holy Spirit because Jesus told them that on the day of Pentecost, <laughs> If you if you just wait, I'm gonna give you power, doodleman's power. Mm, mm, mm. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. You gonna be my witness. And he, God, Jesus said, Well, when I go up, I'm gonna send another one just like me. And that other one he sent was his Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, he is here with us right now. He is in the midst of us right now. And then on that day of Pentecost, he came down like fire and lit on people's heads like fire. And then they all started praising God and speaking in tongues and, 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 and celebrating what the Lord was doing. Folks saw him and said, oh, y'all must be drunk. And they said, no, we ain't drunk. This is too early in the morning to be drunk 
on wine, but we drunk in the spirit. And Peter preached on the day of Pentecost and he preached and everybody heard the word in their own language. That's what the Holy Spirit is all about doing, bringing us together into one body, the body of Jesus Christ, the church that we one day might have a royal wedding. I know I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. We'll have a raw wedding. Now, that wedding will be, Jesus will be the groom. And we as the church, the body of believers, will be dressed in long white robes. We'll have a train that is long. And we'll be married to the lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We'll sing hallelujah and shout the victory. I know I'm excited this morning, but it's Pentecost. Everybody ought to be excited. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you say, boy, you, you didn't preach Pentecost and, and now you finna talk about Jubilee. Oh, yes, I am. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try to teach about Jubilee, but I had to preach Pentecost today. <laughs> oh, glory to his name. Hallelujah. I had to preach about Pentecost today. It just wasn't right. So let's just give God a Pentecost of praise right now. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the day of Pentecost, the day your Holy Spirit arrived, the day the Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit came down. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh. Okay. Catch your breath, boy. Get back to your lesson. <laughs> All right. So the key concept for this lesson is God commanded us to rest for our benefit and for his glory. The Sabbath year is a year of rest and the year of jubilee requires rest also and we got to trust in god to supply all our needs the israelites had to trust them to supply all of their needs and so when we look at this lesson today here are going to be our aims first our learning facts to summarize the nature of the rest the land was to receive during the Sabbath year and the year of Jubilee. The biblical principles we're aiming for in this lesson is to be able to explain the spiritual principles these laws were meant to instill. And then our daily application that we're aiming for is to identify one way we can proclaim the year Jubilee that Jesus has ushered in and made and make a plan to do so. Oh, hallelujah. So we're going to break this lesson down. The easiest way to say is I'm going to talk about the Sabbath year and the year of Jubilee. That's the easy uh, 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 outline. And that, that would be a pretty good outline to just, just deal with it from those two standpoints. But God said, no, no, we're going to talk about celebrating freedom. And so my outline is in three parts. Don't worry about the future. Enjoy the moment and celebrate freedom. So in order to celebrate your freedom, your freedom from sin, your freedom from death, your freedom from the grave, our freedom that was given to us by Jesus Christ, when he died on the cross for our sins and God raised him from the dead. That freedom, in order to celebrate, we can't worry about the future. Why? Because we know who holds the future. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me give you some background. I, I've been, been hooping and hollering and screaming and all of that because I, I'm just excited. I'm just excited about the day of Pentecost. You know, I, 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 I after I get through on 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 uh, God in the midst, I'll take a little break and then I'll go to the jail today. And I'm just looking for the Holy Spirit to move in a mighty and powerful way. 
at the jail today. So that's why I'm just, I just can't wait to get to the jail so I can just, just, oh yeah, 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 yeah. But here it is, Leviticus, Leviticus. This is my ground. Leviticus, Leviticus is a book. It's a book filled with laws that, that govern how the Israelites and particularly the priests were to approach God. It, 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 it's about holiness and, and how an old holy people could, could have a relationship with a holy God. These laws uh, included instructions on how to offer sacrifices and, and also for how to, to remain ritually clean in various circumstances. The book also contains laws concerning the, 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 the required feast and holy days in the Israelite community. Leviticus 25 speaks of, of, of the holy days, the year of Jubilee. In the year of Jubilee, give the land rest and, and, and feel and, and, and free others from slavery and from bondage. And, 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 and that, that is so so good. It, it's something that you should rejoice over. It is also required for, 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 for communal holiness. In, in the eyes of God, we, we must take care of the land and we must also take care of our brothers and our sisters. That's, that's what the year of Jubilee is all about. So, so let me ask you this. Have, have you ever been part of an all-out celebration? Has your hometown team ever won a championship? Usually, usually when that happens, people crowd the streets and, and party until the wee hours of the morning. This is usually uh, uh this is usually a parade where 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 people skip work to attend and, and cheer on the victor. The whole city goes out in a celebration for their champions. Golden State did it last year in San Francisco. The year before, the, the Cleveland did it. Uh, and the Cleveland for oh boy. And don't forget when the Chicago Cubs won the World Series. Folks went berserk. That's how people do. Well, in biblical times, Celebrations were very common and part of the rhythm of life in Israel. One celebration stood out in the annual Israelite calendar, and that was the year of Jubilee. This was a celebration that included everyone and, and accomplished specific purposes for the land. It was a party that celebrated not only freedom from slavery and freedom from death, it was a time to give the land a rest. The year of Jubilee was a time for celebrating the freedom God had given to all of them. Today, as I said earlier, we gonna talk about this celebration of freedom. We're going to talk about celebrating freedom. So my first point is don't worry about the future. Listen to the text. Listen to the text. Listen to the text. Let me get to my text. I'm, I got so many things going on. Listen to my text. Listen to the text. The text says, and this time I'm going to read it from the, from, from the uh, uh, message Bible. It says, in Leviticus chapter 25, verses 1 through 7, God spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai and said, speak to the people of Israel. Tell them when you enter the land which I am going to give you, the land will observe a Sabbath to God. Sow your fields, prune your vineyard, take in your harvest for six years. But the seventh year, the land will take a Sabbath of complete and total rest, a Sabbath to God. You will not sow your fields or prune your vineyards. Don't reap what grows of itself. Don't harvest the grapes of your unintended vine. 
The land gets a, a year of complete and total rest, but you can eat from what the land volunteers during the Sabbath year. You and your men and your women servants and your 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 your, your slaves and, and your foreigners who live in your country and of course also your livestock and the, the wild animals in the land can eat from it. Whatever the land volunteers of itself can be eaten. This is the Sabbath rest. And in the Sabbath rest, we don't have to worry about the future. Moses let the children of Israel know that when they entered the land, that he had planned to give them a land. Not their own land, but a land God gave them flowing with milk and honey. They need to have a plan for a party. <laughs> yeah, he said, I'm going to give you this land. And, and what I want you to do first before I give you this land is plan for a celebration. Plan for a party. Because I'm giving you this land. It's my gift to you. You didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. But I'm giving it to you because that's the kind of God I am. And so you need to plan a party. He, he, he let them know that every seven years, seventh year, they're to give the land rest. It's not just the rest for the sake of the uh, economical and agricultural pro uh, production. It's a Sabbath rest set apart for the Lord. See, see, I, I've learned to understand that if you give a land rest, what happens to the land is that in a year of rest, it rejuvenates itself and all of the minerals come back together and, and, and make that piece of land stronger. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me break this thing down to you. Uh, um, I, take, I take some medicine. I take some medicine. I, 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 let me get the name of it in my head. I, oh, man, come on now, Lord. Help me out, Jesus. Give me to me in a little bit. Well, this medicine is a mineral that naturally grows in 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 the ground. It 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 is it, in the dirt, and, and this mineral, this mineral is 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 needed. So, if you look in your multivitamins and all of that, this mineral is in there, and it just ain't coming to my mind yet. And so, because in our economy, in our agricultural system, we never do a seventh year rest. So we rotate crops all year long. They go from corn to cotton to wheat, then back to, to soybean. Then they start over corn, cotton, wheat, soybean. And they rotate the land constantly and never giving it rest. So therefore, this mineral that, that is required in our body is never generated in the land and in the food that grows on the land. Therefore, when the animals eat the, eat the food, they don't get that mineral. So when we eat the vegetables and eat the animals, we don't have that mineral. And so everybody got a, a, a diminished, a diminished uh, uh, mineral deficiency. And that's why Alzheimer's is so strong now because they ain't got that mineral in their system. That mineral, that mineral if, I, if it come to my mind, I'll say it to you in a minute, it helps with your memory. It helps with your nervous system. It helps with your ability to just live. I wish I had the name of it off the top of my head, but it just ain't coming to me. So anyway, God ain't just having a Sabbath rest for that. But he's having a Sabbath rest. He's, he's telling them to do it so that, so that it will be set apart to the Lord. It's just something special about setting apart something for the Lord. That's consecrating it. That's making it holy. That's making it sacred. And he says, set that apart for me. So he says they can work the land for six years, but on the seventh year, they are to let it rest. Imagine if we took this principle, this same principle today. We don't have agricultural economy, but we can take the principle of resting 
in Christ Jesus, who is our Sabbath, saying that we don't have to be wary about the future, but to trust that God will provide. Yeah, that's why I say don't worry. Don't worry. He told us don't worry. Jesus said, don't worry. Behold, the birds of the air, they, they, they neither reap nor do they sow. But your Lord, your God provides for them. And if he provides for them, how much more will he provide for you? So why don't we take a rest and stop all the stress? Why don't we take a rest and stop worrying about everything under the sun? And cast all our cares upon the Lord, knowing that he cares for us. Stop worrying. Take a Sabbath rest in the Lord. Stop worrying about where your money coming from. Stop worrying about where your food coming from. Stop worrying about if you're going to make that car note, if you're going to make that light bill. Stop worrying about all that stuff and give it to God, who will provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and all that dwelleth therein. It's the Lord. And if you're a child of the king, won't he take care of you? So don't wear. So that, that's, that's what God was trying to tell the children of Israel. Don't wear it. For six years, you go do what you're going to do. You, 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 you. You, you reap, I mean, you sow, you reap the harvest, you sell it, you keep, you know, whatever you do. But on the sixth, seventh year, take a rest. Now, 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 this throws some people off because they go, well, if, if, how they go eat? How they go eat on the, in the seventh year? Well, God is not a, a God of confusion. And he's not a God of contradiction. What he's saying is, don't do this as a job in the seventh year. Don't, don't be trying to grow your crops by sowing and reaping. Don't be trying to pull in the harvest. But on that seventh year, whatever the land voluntarily grows, you eat off of that. Don't go out there trying to make money because, see, that's part of our problem in today's society. Too many people are filled with these ambitions that include greed. It's okay to be ambitious, but it's terrible to be greedy. I just said something to somebody. And so what he's saying is, in that Sabbath year rest, let everybody eat what's in the land. Your slaves, your, your, your hirelings, your, the foreigners, the animals, let them eat. And get that land rest. The word of God says in, in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus said these words in verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. Don't be worrying about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink and what you're going to wear. The God we serve, he, he knows and he will supply all your needs. Don't worry about what tomorrow holds. Tomorrow holds enough trouble for itself. Don't worry. The reason he he don't want us to wear it is because when we don't wear, when we wear it, we cannot appreciate nor celebrate the present moment. We can't enjoy the present moment. We can't enjoy the moment that we're living in. And so that's my next point. In this celebration, don't worry about the future, but enjoy the moment. Moses let them know that they can't harvest any of the crops that grow on their own. They, they can't store them up and eat them later. They're to eat what's right in front of them right now. To truly celebrate this, this Sabbath rest, to truly celebrate later the Jubilee, they must enjoy the present moment and live in the presence of the true and living God. 
as a believer, we are not called to the past, nor are we called to the future, but we are called for the present right now to serve this present age, our calling to fulfill. We got to do it now. We got to celebrate what God has given us and give him praise for what he's done for us right now. Oh my goodness. This year, on July 21st, I turned 57 years old. So that means that when I turned 50, that was my year of Jubilee. Seven years later now is a year of Sabbath rest. And I want y'all to know, God is doing some stuff in my life that, boy, I can't wait for him to finish what he's doing at this present time so I can give my testimony. But I can say it this way. He's giving me rest. He's removing my worries. He's freeing me of my debts. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. It's a Sabbath rest. Let's go on to our last point, which is celebrating freedom, which gets into the year of Jubilee. And that's verses 8 through 12 from the message Bible. He says in verse 8 of Leviticus chapter 25, count off seven Sabbath of years, seven times seven years, seven Sabbaths of rest, add up to 49 years. Then sound the loud blast on the ram's horn on the 10th day of the seventh month, the day of atonement. And I already told you about the day of atonement. Sound the ram's horn all over the land. Sanctify, consecrate, make holy. The seventh, I mean the 50th year, making it a holy year. Proclaim freedom all over the land to everyone who lives in it. A, a jubilee for you. Each person will go back to his family's property and reunite with his extended family. The 50th year is your year of jubilee. Don't sow, don't reap what volunteers itself in the field, don't harvest the unattended vines because it is the year of jubilee, a jubilee, a holy year for you. You are permitted to eat whatever volunteers itself in the fields. This is the year of jubilee. And he says the year of jubilee was a year of freedom, a year of freedom for the land. And for those who were in debt and enslaved, it was a celebration of freedom. And we can celebrate that celebration of freedom still today because we have a celebration of freedom from the penalty of sin, which is death. We have a celebration of freedom for not only the penalty of sin, but the problem of sin. Because the problem of sin, we've been set free from, because no temptation will be that, that, that is known to man, that God will not provide a way of escape. And so, so, so we don't have to deal with the penalty of sin. And we don't have to deal with the power of sin that causes us problems because we're free because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. 
But not only should we celebrate that we don't have the penalty of sin and, and we don't have to bow down to the power of sin. But one glad day, we won't even be in the presence of sin. We'll be in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ in heaven. And we'll be singing with the angels, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who is, was, and is to come. And so, as a child of the King, as a believer in Jesus Christ, we don't need a priest to go behind the veils on the Day of Atonement to pray for the sins of the people and of the nation of Israel because we are part now of the royal priesthood. Because on the day that Jesus died, the curtain that separated the Holy of Holies from the inner chamber was ripped from the top to the bottom. Nobody ripped it but God. And God tells us that we can come boldly now to the throne of grace, to the throne of mercy, that we might receive his grace of mercy, that we might be atoned. So the day of atonement is always going on in our lives. And that day of atonement in Israel time was preceded by the year of Jubilee. What am I saying? Preacher, what you saying? Every day is a day of atonement. So therefore every day should be a day, a year and part of a Jubilee. The interesting thing that I found out about the year of Jubilee is that there are no recorded history in the Bible that they ever celebrated this Jubilee. It's not recorded anywhere. And Israel was supposed to celebrate the year of Jubilee because God commanded them. So, are we going to be like the Israelites and never celebrate the year of Jubilee? As believers, we enter into a perpetual year of Jubilee. It goes on and on like the Energizer Bunny. In Christ, we have freedom from being in debt and enslaved to sin. In Christ, we have a reason to celebrate freedom. Oh, Oprah went through. She was at the wedding yesterday. Boy, you see that tweeting dress she had on, the lavender, whatever y'all women call it. She was looking good in that dress, boy. But old Oprah went for once said that, that, that whatever has happened to you is in your past. And it has no power over your present moment because life is now. Oprah definitely is motivated to live this quote out. Her early life was marred by sexual abuse and fatherlessness. So as a Christian, we can amend her words to say, whatever happened to you in the past has no power over the present moment because life is Christ. Christ is the one who is our eternal, perpetual jubilee. And he gives us freedom to live in faith and depend on God. This present moment becomes satisfying and beautiful because of our relationship with him. The freedom we have in Christ is not to be taken for granted. Jesus died for us to have freedom from sin, freedom from worry, freedom from sorrow. We may not experience all of that now, but he, but we have this hope in Jesus Christ. The hope 
that God has given us enough for us to go into all out celebration and praise of him. What God has given us in Jesus Christ should motivate us enough to not worry about our future, to enjoy our present moment and to celebrate our freedom. Oh, hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge the true freedom comes only when we follow your commandments. Help us, Lord, to treat your word as the ultimate authority, to follow your son as Lord and depend on your spirit for the power to live holy lives before this world. We pray this in the name of Jesus who has set us free to celebrate. Before I close this recording, I want to give those who are listening an opportunity to become free from your sins, to give your sins to Jesus. And we do it by praying the prayer of salvation. Please pray this prayer with me. And I promise you, if the Holy Spirit moves on you and you truly believe this in your heart and confess it with your mouth, you will be saved and set free. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You prayed that prayer, you are now saved. Well, we're getting ready to go over to our conference call line. If you want to join in for prayer or if you want to join in for conversation, all you got to do is dial 619-639-4733, 619-639-4733, and you can join our overtime conversation about this wonderful word that was just preached. And if you need prayer, personal prayer, a personal word, we'll be online also for that. So Facebook, I want to thank you for joining us. Have a blessed Pentecost day. Happy Pentecost day and continue to celebrate your freedom. May God bless you and keep you. Be blessed and always remember, be a blessing.